Hello, this is the third video in my time value of money series and in this presentation I'm going to show the computation of future value of variable cash flows. In this first example here we have different uh, cash flows occurring at the end of each of four years. And so basically if we want to do manual computation here using the future value formula all we have to do is to simply find the future value of each of these cash flows separately and then add them all up as I show here. So this first one for example is going to be compounded over three periods irrespective of the fact that we are here today. So bear in mind that valuation is based on the period between when the cash flow is expected to occur and the point in time when value is being determined and that's why this is compounded over three periods because from here to here we have three periods from here to here two periods hence this value here and from here to here one period. This last cash flow is not to be compounded at all because it occurs at the point where value is being determined. So now here's um, the summary of the uh, analysis, the substitution and the results. Now though, but we can more easily use the BA2+. plus. Notice here I um, showed the um, icon for the professional version because that's going to be what we're going to have to use to perform this analysis. The reason being that the student version is not equipped to calculate the future value of variable cash flows. And so this is the professional version here. And if you don't have it, no worries, because you can also use an Excel spreadsheet to accomplish the same task. So let's begin by clearing the screen and hitting second clear TVM, second clear work. All right, this is a ritual you're going to have to perform before you use the BA2 plus to perform any task. So now, because the cash flows are different, we're going to use stay on the second row of keys and uh, the thing to hit is CF for cash flows. And after you hit CF, hit second clear work and that erases whatever work you did previously within that mode. So now let's start cash flow sub zero. Uh, do we have any cash flow at time zero? We do not have. So we're going to have to bypass it, click arrow down and go to C1 which is 500. So 500 and hit enter. You're going to have to hit enter after every data input. So scroll down to C2 bypassing the F's, the frequencies. So this is 600. There you go. 600 enter and scroll to C3 which is 800 right there. So 800 enter and finally sc scroll to C4 which is 900. 900 enter and we're done. So all we got to do is um, staying on this second row of keys so we hit NPV and it prompts us to put in the required rate of return which if I may show you that it's uh, 8% so type in 8 and enter and then scroll down. It prompts you to compute NPV. We don't really need that but what the heck let's go ahead and hit compute. So that gives us the present value of these cash flows today. That's not what we need so let's scroll further to reveal NFV which is net future value and then you click compute and that's your result 3093.70 approximately. Alright let's head on to the next problem here. So here the only thing that's different is that cash flows start occurring from the beginning of each period. So now, manually speaking, this first cash flow is going to have to compound it over four periods because from here to here is uh, we have four periods and ditto for the rest of them according to their respective um, time periods. So um, again, you summarize the uh, future values and find that to be the, the total to be 3341.19 and here's a summary of the uh, manual computation, the substitution and the uh, final solution. But it's more fun to go ahead and use the BA2 plus. So we're going to use that one more time. So we're going to pull this guy up all right and uh, again let's clear the screen then hit CF and after we hit CF what do we do? Second clear work. All right, that clears up whatever we did pri uh, previously. So let's go ahead and type in this 500 because we do have a cash flow at time zero. So CF sub zero is going to be 500. Enter and then scroll to C1 which is 600. Enter and scroll to C2 which is this 800. Enter and then you scroll to C3 which as you can see here the cash flow at the end of the third period is 900. So 900, 
enter and for good measure I summarize them over here so now we're gonna to have to go to C4 C4 now keep in mind that this is a four-year investment so even though we, we have no cash flow here we need to actually make an entry of zero for time period four because if you do not the, the system will assume that what you have is is a three-year investment since the last cash flow you entered was C3 the cash flow occurring at the end of the third period but we do have four periods so make sure the system knows that this is a four-year investment by doing what I what I just did which again was zero and enter so now we're done if we hit N N NPV we type in eight and enter and then uh, go to NPV uh, click arrow down so again what the heck we click uh, let's compute NPV that tells us what the future value of these cash flows are today but that's not what we want we want to get the future value so arrow down and now we click compute and that's all she wrote 3341.19 so now you can also use Excel to do this now though Excel is not equipped with a direct NPV uh, sorry NFV function a future value fun function where there are different cash flows and so you're gonna have to compound these cash flows individually and you're gonna get these results when you do it individually you can see the embedded um, the uh, function I used up there and I as a reminder here's the main function and here's the calculation function for each of these uh, values for each of these cash flows and so when you do them individually you sum them up and you got it right there all right and this is for the first example where cash flows occur at the end of the period and that's all there is to this